The next section for TA southbounders is the town of Fanganui to Palmerston North. Part of my pronunciation. It is 76.3 miles and I kept these clips long in the beginning here because I wanted to show you more of the holiday park and kind of the central hub for a lot of hikers. I also kept these cat clips in here. Again, not super informational per se. It's just there are a lot of cats in New Zealand in general. And if you leave your window open in the holiday park, that cat or cats will come and say hi to you. They may hop in through the window. So when you leave the holiday park, you have about two to three miles of road walk into the town of Fanganui proper. Um, it is mostly kind of community road walk with the side tracks, uh, excuse me, side walk. So it's pretty easy. You don't have to worry about it too much. I didn't get a whole lot of film out there because of it was just downpouring. Um, but you're on sidewalk 99% of the time. And once you get into the town of Fanganui proper, again, I didn't get a whole lot of film because it was just pouring. But there's full service town, a lot of amenities. There are motels in there. Um, if you wanted to go past the holiday park for any reason and get to the full town the day prior or even if you wanted to do a short day that day. So when you leave the town, you have a very sharp up, very steeply up to get up this hill called Dury Hill. And there's a big monument at the top. You can actually enter that structure and climb to the very top. We did not, um, we didn't really think about it until we were past that point, but you can if you wanna get a broad sweeping view of the surrounding town. So when you leave there, you continue your road walk. No more sidewalks though, you're just walking pure road. The road, not too busy. Um, there's some construction. Again, this might not apply to future seasons, but this was in 2022, 23. And it is a very quiet road and you can kind of just continue. I filmed this church because I wanted to talk on like places to take breaks along road walks because you never really want to sit on the shoulder per se. So you find like these public areas that you can kind of utilize for break spots proper. So once you get up to this junction, the road does begin to get a little busier around here. Again, it's not like a state highway level busy like SH1, SH2, SH3. Um, but it is starting to get a little busy, so just very much stay aware. So I filmed this, this is State Highway 3, and I wanted to talk on this very busy highway. So, there is not really an alternate to get around the Kotoya River, which will be in these future scenes, but if for any reason hikers ahead of you said the river is flooded, don't do this, you would have to walk State Highway 3 if you wish to connect your steps into Bulls, Again, are your people, a lot of people hitched from Fanganui to Bulls or there are Trail Angels providing shuttles because of how high these rivers were and how high these flood levels were. But if you want to give it a go, you junction off that state highway and you started that kind of more rural road I showed you there. It eventually leads into two track through these kind of rolling hills that gives you views of the river very beautiful two track through here it is all private land through here and a working farm so you're not allowed to camp anywhere through there you have to camp at designated areas which again is much of the flavor of the north island of new zealand it will connect you into this beach and this beach is really cool you walk it for anywhere from four to six miles um, sometimes it's a little more sinking sand than you wish it's not super compact super flat again it could be because we caught it at a certain tide but as you can see, the footprints sink down more than you'd prefer sometimes. So this beach will ultimately lead you into that river that I was talking about, the Kotata River. And you do, this is it right here, and you do have to time it at low tide to cross properly. Again, with our year and the floods and the rain, there was a special circumstance, but we arrived there around mid tide. And as you can see, it is super swelled. I ended up walking and getting about 10, 20 feet from the bank and it became chest high and this is not one you want to swim because you can see it's moving pretty quickly and if you get sucked out by it the ocean is very closely by you to the right um, and it would just feed you directly into the ocean so it is a big logistical hazard it forced us to camp on the other side because we're like you know what we're gonna wake up at midnight when it's officially low tide and see if we can try our hand again we were hoping that it was just the tide that had swelled it and it wasn't all this rain that you see. Unfortunately, it was the rain. We woke up at midnight that night and the river had actually gotten higher, even though it was officially low tide. So again, can't stress that enough. Kotaya River, Kotaisha River, part of my pronunciation. Um, if any reports are that it's flooded, you will not be able to cross it um, unless you want to swim. And 
I would heavily recommend against swimming. There's no alternate around it. You would have to backtrack all the way to State Highway 3 to then walk State Highway 3 into the town of Bowles. The pieces of film you're going to see here are, we didn't have all the information um, that I'm giving you right now, our year. So we looked at our satellite maps and we saw that if you paralleled the river long enough and walked upstream, it would connect you into what looked like a public farm track, two-track road. So you had to do a little bit of bushwhack bushwhacking in the beginning. Um, <laughs> it will change your pace. Again, this information I just want to show you. I would not take this route because it is private land. We ended up running into the owners of said private land and they were very understanding. They were a little standoffish at first because they didn't un at first know what we were doing and then we told them about the flooded river and they were very, very friendly and understanding. But please, 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 please don't cross private land without prior permission. Again, we didn't have the information going into it that we would have would had and we would have made a different decision. This is the bridge that we did like a giant alternate around to get across the river. As you can see, this is the Katashi River upstream and it is super, super, super flooded. So you get back to road and ultimately you end up walking back into the town of Kotashia. And the town of Kotashia has a campground. It's what we were actually shooting for the day prior. Um, it's kind of a full service campground. The town itself doesn't have a lot of amenities, but the campground, it has running water. It has beautiful bathrooms. I say beautiful because they're very well upkept. This is it. Um, you can see the grass is very nicely manicured and it's just a really nice campground. So if the river is in regular conditions, most hikers will probably shoot for here from the town of Funganui. Um, really, really nice campground. So when you get back onto official trail, um, quote unquote, it becomes flooded. It, we've read in the comments that this area is pretty much consistently flooded. It's not just with our um, unluckiness in the season that this area pretty much is yeah, consistently flooded and it will vary from shin high to knee high so it will impact your pace. And once you get back to the beach on the other side of the Cetacea River, you have anywhere from seven to nine miles of beach walk. I believe it may be a little bit less somewhere in that ballpark. And it's a long, long beach. Pack out your water from Cetacea Campground. As you saw, there was that inlet into the ocean. It would be more brackish water. I wouldn't personally feel comfortable with it and it's heavily sedimented. So pack out water from Cotatia to get you to at least the town of Bulls. Um, again, it comes down to personal preference, but it's easy enough. It's not too far. So where you junction off the beach is this big kind of pile of driftwood. You kind of have to like jungle gymnastics your way through that will ultimately lead you into about a mile to two miles of this kind of pseudo two track, single track. And I say pseudo two track, single track a lot because it kind of just fluctuates along those miles. Um, it doesn't stay consistently one or the other. So once you finish that portion of track, you're back into road and this road will ultimately lead you all the way into the town of Bulls. It fluctuates from super, super slow traffic, not many cars to start getting busier as you keep getting closer and closer to the town of Bulls. So as you're walking into the town of Bulls, again, it is a full service town. You have more than a few options for amenities, restaurants, um, grocery stores. You can kind of pick and choose your things through there. We ended up staying at the Bulls Holiday Park, which is an extra half mile, mile out of town. Um, you can pitch your tent in the grass. They have these little motel units, full service kitchen, um, full amenities, as I've talked about with holiday parks in the past. I kept this piece of film long because it shows our new tent. Again, it's just something that amused me, not really informational. It is a tent that is made by a company in New Zealand, and it actually withstood very, very well for what we were hoping to get out of it. So the next day, people sometimes break this into two days, but if you're just jonesing for a bigger town, you can go all the way to the town of Palmerston North. And I say town when I mean city. The day will start off with busy road. You have to cross that state highway again, and you'll see Magpie here in a second, just jogging across because the traffic is really consistent. Sometimes you have to wait on those sides of those roads just to find a pocket to end up crossing within there. And after that quick kind of busy road area, it does get more gradually like mellow and you end up walking up towards a place called Mount Lee's Reserve. And Mount Lee's Reserve does allow camping. Um, so we actually had wanted to shoot for it the day prior, but due to that long river alternate, we weren't able to get there. It is a really nice spot. They have water, they have restrooms, um, and you can stay there. So 
You continue your road walk and some people decide to stay in this town called Fielding. And Fielding is kind of a smaller town on the outskirts of Palmerston North if you want a shorter day. It is a very, very beautiful town. They have beautiful parks through there. Um, again, full service town. Not going to have as many amenities as Palmerston North proper because Palmerston North is a city. But we heard reports of people that had stayed there and they really enjoy their stay. Have motels, um, have probably a holiday park. It has many options. You can see the Bulls theme continued on throughout our day there. Once you get off the road and start getting closer to fielding proper, you start going through more of these communities, more sidewalks, you don't be, don't have to be walking that shoulder anymore. And I haven't talked about pace these past few days because as you see, it is so flat. Um, it is mostly road, pavement, you can hold a very standard pace on this. And that last scene was us going through the town of field and you don't go through directly through downtown, but you can see it off to the side. So when you leave field and you think you're gonna be walking this bike path the rest of the way to Palmerston North, don't underestimate it. It goes from bike path to very sketchy road and then into this portion of trail. And again, this might not apply to the upcoming season of 2023-24, but our season, the bridge was washed out. So you have to go down and if it's not flooded, you probably could afford it, but we couldn't afford it safely, couldn't see the bottom. So we had to turn around and go back up to the very busy highway to cross the road. It is right before the small pocket town called Bunnythorpe. Um, so look at your maps there and this really surprised us here We did not think we had any farm track But there's about two or three miles before the final road walk into The city of Palmerston North that is this very slow farm track So if you're just pushing for town and really excited to get that rest in that food in that laundry in Know there's some of that farm track and it will impact your pace. Um it's not super well maintained. It's very chewed through ground. So be prepared for that farm track. We were, again, not prepared for it. I think it may have been an extension actually this year of 2022, 23, that they just officially made that part of the trail. So as you can see, we got into Palmerston North. There's a little bit of bike path road to get back in a few miles after that farm track. And I filmed the shoes. I kept this long here because you may want to replace your shoes here since it is a major city before the mountain range of the Toraros, part of my pronunciation. And I also kept these pieces of pockets of film long because this is a very logistical hub for a lot of hikers. Palmerston North, where you stay at the motels, is very easy to access everything. You're a few blocks from the countdown, the pack and save, you're a few blocks from the restaurants. So most people will use this place to send out food resupply boxes to the South Island, specifically the town of St. Arnold and the town of Arthur Pass, as those places are hard to access the food that you may desire. So many people use this as a logistical hub as we did. Um, we resupplied for five days for Alpine Lodge in St. Arnold, and then we resupplied for six days for the Bealey Motel in Arthur Pass. You may have those two flip-flopped, but do your research there. Um, I would also recommend sending out one more box to the Boyle Outdoor Center in case you want to avoid a long, long hitch in the Hammer Springs. So this town really is a good spot because, as I said, everything is very closely accessible and you can pack up your boxes and then the post office is also a few blocks away from the hub of motels. So get, your, get ready. You're getting close to the South Island. A couple more sections and you're going to go get it. So we're packing them up, shipping them out.